To get your gel plate image transfers to work like this, you need to do this first. Hi, I'm Jessica Russo Cher. I am an artist and an art teacher, and I've been navigating my way through the jelly plate printmaking process. And I want to share with you the best tips on how to edit and prepare your images so you can be more successful. It all comes down to how you edit your photos. Start with a high resolution photograph that has strong lighting. To see if it's a good candidate, put it into black and white and up the contrast. I use Photoshop for this, but you can use a lot of different editing apps that are free. I usually take the editing process a step further in Photoshop, where first I make sure I increase the DPI to 300. It's very important that you have resample, deselected, and you check the overall size to make sure it's still a big image. And this is where I edit it into black and white by going to image, mode, grayscale, and then I use image mode adjustments to fine tune the photograph. Just play around with the various things in here. Then if you go to image mode and change it to bitmap, bitmap will change it into halftone. And you can play around with these settings, but I find that these are the settings that work well for my photographs most of the time. So I hit OK there, and then I hit OK on this next palette. Halftone turns all the gradients and all the value transitions into these little tiny dots. These dots are fantastic for image transfers because the image transfer works best when there's a fair amount of toner on the photo. And this concentrates all of the toner in the dark areas with larger dots. Now I want to go through this process that sounds a little confusing. I want to go back up to image mode and I have to change it back to grayscale first before I have any of the options to change it to anything else. It will bring up this box, just hit OK, and then I'm going to go back up to image mode and then I can select CMYK. And those are the colors that your printer uses to print. And it will give you a richer, deeper black when you print a color laser print of a black and white image. So once you follow those steps, your jelly plate image transfers will be a lot more successful. Now let me start by talking about the image transfer process with a smaller plate and a less complicated print. My plate has been conditioned with baby oil and it's fairly clean. I like to work on a piece of plexiglass so I can look underneath it later on in the process and I can easily move it around my studio to make room for other projects. I typically use Amsterdam acrylic paint for the image transfer process because I feel like this one has been the most consistent. Sometimes I apply the paint on a separate piece of paper or a palette. One of the key things that could keep your image transfers from transferring properly is not having the correct paint or the right amount of paint for this layer. It needs to be very even and fairly light. You can if you hold it up, you should almost be able to see through slightly, just slightly translucent. Photo that I took that I'm going to use for this image transfer actually is not half tone. I printed it super high resolution and CMYK. I didn't do half tone because I didn't want to see the dots for this one. I wanted to try to capture all of the texture in this stairwell. It's printed on regular uh, printer paper. It is a laser photo print. I gently press down the corner and then I peek up to see how well it's transferring. Seeing, I need to see if it needs a little bit more pressure. In this case, it does. So I use the brayer with a fairly light touch and I can see, okay, it's working. I'll pull up the whole image. Once that layer of black acrylic paint is fully dry, I can go in and I could just add one color over this. I could just use a brayer and just add one color and be done with it. I prefer to do a little bit more work on my images. This one, I'm not overworking. I just wanted to pull out the banisters, add a little bit of a highlight on them and maybe a little bit on the wood grain. So I just went in with relatively thin layers of acrylic paint, slightly diluted with water, but not too much. If you dilute the paint too much with water, it will cause some pooling. 
If you use gel medium as one solid layer before you begin this process, it will keep the paint from pooling. I've added some highlights. Now I'm going in and adding a few bursts of some hot pink color, just kind of spreading it around because I do want some variation in this image. And I'm getting ready to do my final transfer layer. So I am blending this out with a brayer just to add a little bit of that bright color sparkled uh, or spread throughout the image and I can flip it over on the plexi and kind of get an idea of how well that worked and what color I want to use now for my transfer layer and I decided I wanted to do uh, a little bit of a lighter color in the middle to make that the floor sort of pop out I have to be careful at this point because using the brayer on any of the dry paint uh, with wet paint could cause some of it to peel up if I overwork it. So I want to be gentle with the brayer and not press very hard. And I'm mixing some colors and rolling it on uh, the brayer outside of the frame. And that's some things that you do not see. I am working though relatively quickly because I want to make sure that this final transfer layer is completely wet when I add the Bristol. And I prefer to use Bristol. Bristol is a nice strong paper that allows me to work with several layers and it doesn't buckle very much. Now drying time is really relative to your print. If you have several layers and it's weighted underneath books, it may take longer to dry. This was a pretty thin layered print, so mine only stayed for about 15 minutes. I could feel the back of the paper once that felt dry enough. I felt confident I could lift it off. The problem with working on the plexi is that the gel plate sticks to the plexi, which sometimes can make it challenging to pull the bristle off. So here you can see how a high resolution image, even if it's not halftone, but it's printed CMYK, can do a really strong image transfer and you can just apply some paint behind it and come out with a really cool image. Now let's level this up and show you the image transfer that I started at the beginning of this. I did coat it with a gel medium base and let that dry. And then I added layer upon layer of my reverse image painting. This took me two days to do to fill in and build those layers with the colors that I wanted specifically. Once all those layers were dry, I could go in with my transfer layer. I wanted it to be light so the colors could pop. I waited it under books from 5 p.m. one day to 8 a.m. the next day. And then by then I was able to pull it off the plate. Thicker layers require longer drying time and you just have to feel the back of the paper to know that it's ready. So these are all my photographs, which I feel like I have a lot more control over the lighting. Certainly your laser printer may be an option in your prints not working. I am not a printer expert, but I do believe that editing makes all the difference. Here are some of my most recent gel print monotypes using image transfer. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Happy to try to answer any problems. Also, if you have any editing tips you'd like to share with anyone else, drop those in the comments so we could all help each other out.